here with the filmmaker behind The Rain Collector. Isabel, will you give an uh, introduction? Sure. Uh, I'm Isabella Wing Davy, and I'm the writer and director of The Rain Collector. So, where did this kind of come from? What made you want to dive back in time? And <laughs> I mean, what, what, what started this? Um, well, I'd been interested in uh, ideas of like science on screen for a while, and I'd produced a few shorts that had. Um, been awarded money from the Sloan Foundation, which supports films about science, and and that was kind of uh, I, you know, I was kind of look out for films that, or for ideas for narratives that involve strong female leads, um, and so all those things kind of came together where I was. It was actually raining outside, and I was skimming through the TV, and there was nothing to watch, and I stumbled across a documentary about rain randomly, <laughs> uh, and it had this tiny little section that was about a scientist in England called George James Simons, who'd set up the British Rainfall Organization. Uh, but the thing that really drew me in was that he'd put an advert in the newspaper asking for volunteers, and specifically saying, of both sexes. And I was like, <laughs> there's a film in there about a woman who gets involved in it. Um, so that's kind of the genesis of it. And it's kind of creepy. You've brought the rain with you today. A little bit, a little yeah. bit, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm English, so people make that joke a lot, but, um, but wasn't expecting rain in Dallas today. So. But you've um, been based out of New York. And yeah. you know that's been an impact in your life. Can you talk about crossing the pond and how that's helped or changed your filmmaking in any way? Sure. Uh, well, I did undergrad in, in England, but I studied history. Um, so narratives have always been a big thing. Uh, but I was working in features in England for a while, and then I came to New York um, about six years ago for NYU grad film, which is where I got my MFA in directing. Um, and that was really exciting because it's kind of a different tradition of filmmaking and specifically New York as opposed to LA, you know, it's much more indie and um, not that there aren't great indie filmmakers in LA because there are, but um, but yeah, it, it, it was really exciting to kind of, all of my shorts up until this point have been very contemporary, very New York based. Um, I don't write for English actors, uh, so writing American dialogue and all of that uh, for the past kind of six years. So this film was actually kind of scary in a weird way because it was the first film that I'd made in England. Um, and so I used a completely English cast and crew. Um, I didn't bring anybody with me except for one of my producers because um, I was like, I want to make a film in England um, and have it be completely, you know, I mean, post we did in New York, but, but production and everything was all English. So is this something now that you've gotten past that fear that you want to dive back into or, I mean, you're based out of New York though. Yeah. Uh, I mean both. I think I think there's still a lot of great stories to be told um, historically uh, in the UK, and I think that there's a tradition of period filmmaking that also could do with being shaken up a bit. And I kind of like the idea of bringing a modern aesthetic to period films. Um, but the feature I'm writing right now is Two Sisters in Brooklyn, so uh, <laughs> that'll hopefully be my first feature. And then I would love to make the Rain movie as a feature. Can you talk about casting and, and finding that? female lead that, as you said, you wanted to change it into the female perspective, but finding that person for the film. Sure. Uh, I was always very clear that I wanted to have somebody who was very articulate and very clever and very, who, who could really, who you could believe would be self-taught and would uh, go be in a library for ages and, you know, enjoy the books, but also could still be very charming. Um, and that was something that we kind of, we didn't have trouble with finding somebody because there were plenty of female actresses who have that, but but having that right level of kind of sparkle um, was a was a bit of a, a challenge. But she but Celine Buckins is amazing, I think. And um, she'd been in Warhorse uh, for Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. She's the little girl in Warhorse and um, she was a suggestion from her agent actually. Um, and oh, she wow. came in and auditioned and then we uh, we worked quite a lot. Um, and then we went on I don't know, we, we auditioned a few people, but she definitely stood out for us. She definitely stands out on screen, yeah. too. Yeah, she's, oh yeah, she's got a fabulous face. But also, she, I feel like you can really see that there's something going on behind the eyes, you know? That sparkle. Um, exactly. I like that word, yeah. Uh, uh, what's it like being able, to, now that you've had an audience see it, mm -hmm. um, tell us what that was like? Here in, in a, a southern Texas audience. Right. Uh, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was great. Uh, the audience here has been amazing. I'm looking forward to the next screening today. But... Um, yeah, different. They, they laugh at different things because it's screened in England um, at a couple festivals, and uh, yeah, here they find different things funny. Um, particularly, I think there's you know the whole thing at the tree where she is uh, kind of telling him he's doing things wrong, 
And here they just loved that. <laughs> and they were like, oh, these crazy English um, or something. Uh, so that was really fun. And it's always amazing to hear your work, like hear people responding to your work. Um, Is it weird though to see the different beat with a different audience to know that you know, audiences can change even though it's the same film? I mean, I think that's part of what's so exciting about it. I mean, I think if you, if you do theater, the performance changes every night to an extent, and so the audience response will change every night. Whereas with a film, even though it is the same thing that they're seeing, it completely depends what you're saying, you know, it's who's in the audience, and that can be kind of fascinating. And like, if it screens like late at night, or if it screens in the afternoon, or if it, you know, um, and then also just kind of, yeah, the demographics of who's in there. Well, where can we keep track of you, and also if you can give us any more info on this upcoming feature? Sure. Uh, so I, the raincollectorfilm.com is the website for the movie. Um, I also have a website, which is isabellawingdavy.com, um, where you can track some of the more kind of commercially stuff and music video type things, uh, as well as info on like the feature and previous shorts and stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, my feature, i am uh, just finished my first draft. Uh, I am meant to be showing it to people pretty soon. Um, so I need to get, get back into that a bit. Um, but yeah, there's a hope to kind of try and get that off the ground in the next year. Modern setting or? Yeah. Okay, just Very get back in time. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for bringing it to Dallas. I know the audience has really enjoyed it the first time. I can't wait to see it with an audience today. And uh, thank you, Isabel. Thank Thanks you. for having me.